So um, I'll just hand you over to uh, Alan Simpson, MP, uh, to say a few words. Thanks. Thanks very much. This uh, <coughs> this may well be my last um, public event as a member of Parliament before <laughs> before I get paroled uh, after 18 years, and I just think that it's really fitting to be able to to be part of what I think is the the most visionary and hopeful <laughs> part of the future that we we may have. I saw on here that, that already about 16 tonnes of carbon have been saved by the, the wind turbine. And I suspect that, that most of you are probably no better than I am at recognising what a tonne of carbon looks like. But you will all recognise a cheque when it drops through the letterbox. <laughs> uh, and that's really what this is about. If, uh, if the government doesn't mess things up, and that can't be relied upon, but if we don't mess it up uh, in terms of the entitlement to feed-in tariffs. This single turbine could be delivering an income stream of around £60,000 a year, which we, will be very nice for you, but if you try to replicate what this might mean if we ran this as a model around the whole of our landscape, we start to see things, I think, in a quite different picture. The first is that I was looking at some figures done by Deutsche Bank about their experience in Germany the year before last and what they were saying was that you can't just measure the value of wind turbines and solar panels and well, water generated energy from the cost of the income that you're getting. The real value was in the, in the cost of carbon that isn't being used from conventional energy sources. Now I know the big energy companies are keen to say we shouldn't be racing in, in this direction, we need more power stations of whatever sort, but actually what Deutsche Bank were telling us is that the, the cost of the energy saved from not generating this from power stations was greater than the income that you paid out to people for generating that electricity themselves. So it's not just the carbon saving, but a real shift in the whole way in which we see energy in our society. And I think that it's not just about energy, it's also, it's also about power. That the, there's a power <coughs> shift here, away from big corporations and in favour of citizens. And the more we shift our own relationship to energy and power, towards what we can do as local communities, the more we have the prospect of handing on to our children and our grandchildren the sustainable future that is based on taking responsibility for meeting our and their needs ourselves. So this might just be a single wind turbine, but what it represents is a vision that I think communities across the land are going to have to follow in one way or another. And I just wanted to say thanks for doing this. Thanks for being part of something that will change the whole way in which we're going to be able to live sensibly in the future. And if people have the sense to follow you, then that will be terrific. And if they have the sense to understand how, as a community, this will give you an income stream as well as an energy source that will allow you to put back into that process in a myriad of ways, whether it's in energy generation, whether it's in sustainable food and farming systems, it doesn't matter. It's, I think the future is about learning how to tie our knots together and I think that if we can follow the suit of what you've done here, it will just be magical. I, when we were walking up the lane, I was just, we were saying that it has the same magic for me and the same sort of lifting of the heart as I find when I walk past uh, windmills and the sails billowing and I just haven't managed to understand those who define wind turbines as being ugly. I just think if I want to see ugly I'll go and look at the power station. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to be for bringing beauty and sustainability back into our landscape on a human scale. Thank you very much indeed. Two, three. <laughs> 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 <laughs>